and um, so we kind of lived like that in our um, first couple years in our marriage until one day he comes home and says you know just really excited he goes Flo you know what happened is it I, I got saved I got saved and and um, you know and of course he started he started preaching to me you know you still you need the Lord too you need to you need to be um, you need to know the Lord you need to be forgiven and I'm like yeah right Stay good day. Welcome, my friends, to The Storyteller, where you'll find First Nations people from across Native North America who are following Jesus Christ without reservation. Today, we'll hear from a woman who grew up in a remote O.G. Cree community in northern Manitoba. She was raised in a religious home and went to church where she learned about God. She believed she was good enough to be accepted by Him, but would find out later that she was wrong. Hi, my name is Florence Flett, and I'm originally from northern Manitoba. A place called Red Sucker Lake is where I grew up. And there was about, I think it was about two to three hundred people. And um, it's an isolated reserve. And um, I guess mostly knowing, remembering uh, from when I was a kid, I... uh, I always remembered going to church. My parents took us to church. And my grandparents always encouraged us to be in church. My grandfather was a deacon or a, a lay person at the church. And, and that was um, always uh, a priority is to be in church. And um, growing up, I knew about God and I knew about um, his son, Jesus Christ. But it wasn't until after I got married, I realized how to have that personal relationship with Christ. My my parents were, um, I guess you could say, religious in a way. But I'm grateful for what they taught me growing up. And how they um, read the word, you know, my grandparents, how they always, um, being at my grandparents, every morning is a devotion. And before going to bed, we have a devotion. And that's what my my dad instilled in us too. And, um, you know, remembering, reading the word. And as a kid, how, you know, just... uh, impatient we are just you know squirming but not really um listening but i but remember you know i always remember the uh, the action of reading the word so i grew up believing in the ten commandments because that's what i was taught but thinking too that I was a good person, that I, I was good enough to enter the kingdom of God, that I was good enough to enter um, this place they called heaven, and um, you know, because uh, we weren't really introduced into a lot of things, you know. Um, because I was an isolated reserve and because of my parents being religious yeah we we didn't see a whole lot of things growing up but it was not until after I got married I guess you know when I was about 17 I wanted to um, do something with my life I wanted to because um, there was only you you can only go up to a certain grade in the reserve and um only seems like only those people that have academically inclined i guess you could say um were chosen to 
further their education. But, you know, not given that chance, I knew that I wanted to do that. I wanted to um, go, you know, further my education at the same time, too. You know, my parents didn't allow me to go. So at um, 17, and I was in grade 10, you know, that's how far the school, our, um, our school went. And, um, I lived with, um, I go between, lived with my, my parents and my maternal grandparents and my paternal grandparents because I always, um, my parents always moved moved around because my younger sister being sick, so I was always being the one left behind because there were so many of us children. And so I usually stayed with a relative while they moved closer to the to the hospital where my sister was treated. And, and um, you know, just all at the same time thinking that I don't have, you know, because I didn't really live with my, my, my family and seems like always being tossed to, um, other family members, you know, thinking I grew up thinking that no one really loved me, but I knew that they did. But I guess, you know, just always wanting, always just at the same time searching for that, um, I guess, love, (laughs) and, and, um, you know, being with, just being with different uh, family members and, and their extended family, with extended family, and thinking sometimes I don't belong anywhere. When I was 17, I met Conrad, and, um, you know, we just, uh, became friends and we just hung out and, and, um, but then again, he wasn't, um, he, he didn't live in reserve. He just came to visit. So by the end of the summer, he asked me if I wanted to come with him. And I said, yes, I, I will go with you. But, only if my family allowed me to go. And um, so I asked my parents if I could go with them, and they said no. And then another time, he asked me, he goes, well, I am leaving. I am going away to go back to college. But I don't want to leave you. So he asked me uh, to marry him. And I said, yes, but I'm only 17. I said, only if I'm allowed. And so he asked my auntie, who I was staying with at the time. And, uh, and of course, my auntie goes, well, you are asking the wrong people. Uh, Sure. Well, she is my niece, but you are asking the wrong people. And, um, and she goes, well, go see an elder. And then he'll guide you what to do. And so we went to see the elder and it was like midnight. And, and, um, so we went to see the elder and the elder told us, if you want to do the things properly, he was talking to Conrad, if you want to do things properly, go, go ask your parents to ask my parents for my hand in marriage. And it was like, kind of was thinking, oh, man, this is getting kind of um, um, difficult, you know, just not what I was expecting. But anyways, so he did that. He called his parents up and and asked them if, if they'll um, call my parents. And if they could do this one big favor for him. And, um, sure enough, um, they said, yeah. And, um, a couple of days later, my parents phoned me and, uh, 
they uh, they said yes yes you can go ahead and so that's what we did and uh, three months later that's uh, when we got married but we were still pretty young and we we thought we know everything and um, he was in college and I kind of like stayed home and but he still acted and lived like a single person you know bringing his friends and having these parties and but I didn't allow him to do that in our house because um, I always remember what I was taught you know is um being taught that righteous righteousness I guess and um, so we kind of lived like that in our um, first couple years in our marriage until one day he comes home and says you know just really excited he goes Flo you know what happened is it I, I got saved I got saved and and um, you know and of course, he start he started preaching to me. You know, you still you need the Lord too. You need to you need to be. Um, you need to know the Lord. You need to be forgiven. And I'm like, yeah, right. I'm thinking, you know, wonder how long this is gonna last. And so I just kind of like laughed in his face, and I was like, tell me about it. And thinking, well. At the same time, thinking that I knew more about the Lord than he did because, you know, I did go to church all these years and, and here, um, he's preaching to me and telling me all this and, and yet he still, I mean, like, you know, just soon afterwards, I just see his life changing, like, you know, right before my eyes and I'm like, whoa, he's really serious about this. And and at the same time liking what what who he is. And you know, just his life just changed. That's what happens when someone humbles themselves before God and puts their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Their life changes. And this is what challenged Florence. She could see that Conrad was a different person and she knew that she wasn't. God tells us in his word, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So what about you? Are you in Christ? Have you placed your trust in him? Is he changing you? My friend, if you've been saved, there will be evidence. And God will use that evidence in your life to challenge others. If you're not saved, Why not humble yourself and put your trust in Jesus today? You can find today's program online at withoutreservation.com. If you'd like to contact us, you can write to us at The Storyteller, P.O. Box 1001, Bemidji, Minnesota, 56619. That's P.O. Box 1001, Bemidji, Minnesota, 56619. Our phone number is 877-766-4648. That's 877-766-4648. Thanks for listening. And remember, the greatest story took place at the cross. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. My friends, there's more to Florence's story, so be sure to join us again next time as we listen to The Storyteller.